How many of you guys are familiar with Qtopia? Nobody, because we just launched three days ago, so I figured that was probably going to be your answer out here. Um, how many of you guys are familiar with Quizdom? Okay, we got a lot of you guys that are familiar. So Quizdom is actually the company who launched Qtopia, um, but Quizdom actually has such a strong brand and student response that we've separated this part of it for the launch because we don't want you to assume you need our student response systems in order to use Qtopia. It has nothing to do with that, all right? Actually, what Qtopia is, Qtopia is a free online learning site where you can assign activities for your students to use in or outside of school, and it will provide automatic grading for those activities. And so you can drill in and look at the reports, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to motivate your students to actually work a little harder on that as well. So there's a couple things that you guys are faced with these days. Obviously, did you guys hear that there's a bit of a budget shortfall? Yeah. All right, so we're gonna try to help out with that a little bit. Um, that's why it's a free site. Actually, I want to say technically it is a freemium site. Are you guys familiar with freemium? Okay, so Facebook, you send it, um, Google, all of those sites are freemium. Really what that means is for most of you guys out here, it's just a free site, but you can use the online reporting in your classroom, but if your district wanted to use the reporting for district-wide reporting, we would allow them to pay us for that. All right, so that's basically how the site works. So anything in here that is actually not free, I will tell you that right away, okay? So I'm gonna point that out to you, and then actually today I'm gonna to tell you how you can get it for free. All right, so there's, so we're gonna walk through all of that here. Um, now, have you guys heard of blended learning? What blended learning means? Okay, now, this isn't me, but I've read some recent articles, other people in the industry are expecting that over 60% of all K-12 education will include some form of blended learning by 2015. Okay, and really all that means is they're gonna expect that beyond what you're doing during the school day, your students will have to be doing something online outside the school day to supplement that. And there's, I think, a real reason for that. What's the other shortfall that you guys have? It's time, right? You don't have enough time in the day because they're saying, hey, you need to do this much material, but I'm gonna give you 30 kids, which means you have this much time with each one of them, right? So unless you can do something where you can let technology help you out with that, it's really a struggle. So the site's designed to help give you more of that time back. So we're gonna go in and we're gonna show you how this would work as a teacher. Um, obviously we want this to be really easy for you guys to get up and running and really fast. So I'm just gonna jump in and show you what that would look like from a teacher, just to get started. I'm already logged in as a teacher in this account here. We're just gonna go over to the class tab. And the first thing that I would do when I come into the site, I'm gonna set up my class. So I'm gonna click new class. I'm gonna type in a name here. And I'm gonna say what grade we are and what subjects we relate to. And I'm gonna tell the system that I have a CSV file, comma separated value file. So if you have a gradebook program, it can export a file like that and you just import that file and it sets up your class for you. If you don't, if you're old school or you're just working paper-based, I, well, that would surprise me, but you can manually type in all the names if you want. Once I set up that class, since I said that was a third grade class and we have math in this class as well, it's gonna automatically set up my practice section for me. So if I click over on that practice tab, it set up all these practice activities which students can access at their own pace. So at this point in time, I actually don't need to do anything else if I don't want to. Because it's already set up this practice section for me here. Now if you look up there, you'll see total students at mastery, number of students who have completed the activity or the skill, current class average. So I can see what activities they're accessing, where they're at. I know, hey, if they aren't doing well on it, I can click on the lesson and actually step through that in class, maybe work some problems in class as well. Now, the whole blended thing is kind of an interesting model. I'm not sure if you've thought about this already just since I started talking, but why would you think that your students would be more motivated to work on their math skills outside of UView than they are when they're in your classroom? Right, so I need to actually motivate them in some way, don't I? Okay, so the next things I'm gonna show you is how we're gonna motivate your kids to actually try to do something with this. All right, because I really don't think kids are intrinsically gonna go home and say, gee, I wanna practice math automatically. So we're gonna show you how you can get them on board with you. So we're gonna step through and we're gonna choose one of the activities here. I'm using add within 1000 with regrouping. And I'm just gonna show you what that looks like. Now it allows me to select a game because this isn't a test. So if it's a test, I don't let you choose a game because I wanna keep you focused on the test. Um, but if it's a review or a practice activity, I'm gonna to try to motivate you a little bit here and make it more fun. 
So they can just choose one of the different game modes in here. We can scroll down. I'm going to choose uh, Crash and Smash, one of the games in here. We're just going to hit Start. And now, the thing is on this, if I don't get it right, I don't get to play the game. So I want to get it right, right? So can somebody help me out get this problem here? What's the answer on this? 630? All right. Excellent. I make somebody else do the math, I get to play the game. This is great. So I get to play the game here. I know you guys are all jealous that I get to play games during my job. Okay, so well, I only get 20 seconds of it. Now, the kids don't realize that in the pilot. All the kids were saying, oh, I get to play the games for a minute or two, you know, blah, blah, blah. But really, we're not that generous. We want to keep them more working on the activity than that. Now, they get to step through that. It's going to give them a new problem. Now, say I got this wrong. We're going to say, I, you know, type in 555. That's obviously not the right answer there. It's going to tell me I got that wrong. And obviously, I don't get to play the game right now. But what I want to do is I want to show you how you do it right, right? I want to use this as my teachable moment, my opportunity to help get you back on track. So we're going to click next. It's going to show you how to work this out. You'll notice I actually can't just click next right away. It makes me pause and slow down because we found out in the pilot that kids sometimes get a little click happy and they bypass their opportunity to learn. Um, so now this is working a lot better, keeping everybody on track. So kids can step through. It's going to show them how they would need to work that problem out. And actually, by slowing them down, too, the other motivator is I want more time playing the game, less time doing the problems. I'm more motivated to figure out what I did wrong, right? So we get to click Next here, and it's going to move on to the next problem. Now, that's one way that we're going to motivate the kids. There's lots of great games in here. Actually, when we were doing this, we have you know, football students, you know, football players that are actually playing Sophie's Closet because they just thought it was funny. Um, you know, so there's different games. They're not, you know, there's some gender-based and some non-gender-based. We find that they break those rules on their own anyway and just, uh, you know, go through and use what they think's fun. So we're going to step out of the practice section here and show you actually the second thing that I would do when I get set up as a teacher. All right, so the first thing I did was create a class. The second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here into my account and I'm actually going to get the kids involved in helping me build my avatar. All right, how many guys have an avatar out here? A couple of you guys. So for those who don't, okay, if you know what an avatar is, an avatar is basically just a digital representation that's used to represent you online, sometimes in games and different sites and whatnot. Well, we have an avatar builder in our site. I'm gonna get my kids involved in this. Hey, you guys, let's help build my avatar. I found this great new site, and I want you guys to give me your input because I'm building out my avatar right now. So we're gonna have you guys give me some input here. Um, what kind of eyes? Do we want him to be mad or happy, or what do we want here? Happy. happy. Well, I guess he's as happy as I've got here for this particular character. Um, we're going to maybe give him a little bit of a grin there with, with a beard. Um, we're, let's change his hair up a little bit. We're going to give him a mohawk, maybe make that a green mohawk. And we're going to switch over. Should we make him a superhero? Yeah, okay, so we'll make him a superhero. Put some pants on him. Uh, let's give him a top here. And of course, no superhero is complete without a cape there. So we're gonna give him his cape. Oh, I think I need to fix his shoes here. We'll make his shoes match. All right, now I don't know if you noticed in here on the site, um, it says everything in here cost free. So obviously if you're teachers, you're already self-motivated. I don't really need to play gimmicks with you and make you guys practice activities in order to build your avatar. Uh, but for your students, it's not gonna say cost free. It actually costs Qtopia credits in order to be able to build their avatar. All right, now the only way you can get credits is to actually do your homework or practice those activities in the site. So if you get a 70% or higher on those activities, you earn your percentage in credits. So my students start out with 300 or so credits. They can go in, they can start building a face, they can maybe put a shirt on them, things like that. But oh my gosh, I can't add the jet pack. I can't give them the cape yet. I can't give them a pet. I don't have enough credits. I'm gonna need to go actually start practicing some, you know, some of these materials in the site. So it's one more way to motivate these kids, and it absolutely works.